Simenon's Maigret, a series of plays based on the novels of Georges Simenon. Georges, you've forgotten. When I certainly didn't go to St. Andres, your mayor, for oysters. I have not forgotten. Look, everybody forgets at our age. Without the possibility of stuffing yourself with oysters, would you have taken leave to investigate a minor, petty affair? But the, the death of an old woman, a petty affair. Which could have been dealt with competently by the local police. And the white wine in that part of the country is very, very good. Oh, my God. Let's go over it. Let me tell you why I went. Maurice Denham as Jude Maigret and Michael Goff as Georges Simenon in Maigret Goes to School. Joseph Gaston was shown into my office. It was a wonderful day. You told me that before. Oh, good. Now, he was a grey-faced man with unnaturally bright eyes. He was in quite a state. For some reason, he expected me to know why he was there. So they must be thinking I ran away. But if I were guilty, I wouldn't be here now. Uh, I don't follow you. Uh, guilty of... Guilty of killing Leonie Bira. Mm. That's why I've come to you. I've read a lot about you. I, I know that you were born in the country. You'll understand these people. Although I've lived there for seven years, I'm the schoolmaster. I'm from Paris, still an outsider. That's why they don't like me. You understand? Yes, I do. Now, this woman, Leonie Bira... She used to be the postmistress. Saint-André, that's the village I come from, is about nine miles northwest of La Rochelle. You'll need to know the layout. As in most villages, the school is just behind the mairie. I live on the other side of the courtyard, and beyond the school playground there are gardens and the backs of several houses, including Leonie Bira's. She was 66. Well, how do you know that? I'm secretary of the mairie, so I know everyone's exact age. She was a very unpleasant woman. In what way unpleasant? She hated everybody. Even her niece, who's married to Julien Sellier, the ironmonger, who is also the village policeman. When was she killed? It was on Tuesday. The police believe between 10 and 11 in the morning. But she wasn't discovered dead until early in the afternoon, about 2 o'clock, by Maria, a Polish woman who chars for her. We were in class at the time, and we heard her shrieks across the courtyard as she called for help. Did you go and help? No, no, I, I didn't leave the classroom. I didn't think it necessary. I saw people hurrying towards her house, and a few minutes later, Dr. Bressel's car. Some people are saying that I didn't go because I, I knew what they'd find. Well, please go on. Well, just as class was finishing, a police inspector from La Rochelle came to the school. He'd already questioned a number of people, and he told me that Mayor Bira had been... Uh, Killed with a point two two rifle. With a what? Yes, that is extraordinary, isn't it? I understand you'd be lucky to kill a sparrow with one of them. Oh, indeed you would. Do you own a weapon like that? No, but he'd been told that my son, Jean-Paul, did. He's 13. And quite a few of the other children have them, too. Unfortunately, I... I... Hmm? Unfortunately? When he asked me where it was, I, I said it was in my son's room. We went over to my house. It... It wasn't in Jean-Paul's room. It, it was in my tool shed. Mm. It appeared with what I said later that I'd, I'd lied. Uh, what did you say later? He asked me if I'd left the classroom that morning. I said no. And you had? Yes, for about ten minutes, just after the morning break. I, I'd answered without thinking. Well, that would be between ten and eleven. Yes, somewhere around the time when it's assumed Leonie Bira was killed. One of the farmers had come to the school to ask me to sign a paper he needed to draw his pension. It had to be stamped. The stamp was in the mairie. It was more or less routine. I didn't attach any importance to it. But it looked as if I'd lied intentionally. Now, I don't understand how a point two two could kill her. Could raise a flesh wound, perhaps, but no more than that. I understand the shot went into her head through her left eye and flattened against the skull. I see. Oh, well, is there anything else you want to tell me? Uh, no, I... Oh, yes, I, I keep forgetting the unimportant things. When I was coming back from the mairie, I went over to my house for a quick cup of coffee. I sometimes do that if I think the class is behaving itself. Mm. 
If I'm not mistaken, the oysters from your part of the world enjoy a very high reputation, hmm? Yes, yes, they do. And the white wine? It's very drinkable. Good. Ah, uh, I told you. You went to San André for wine and oysters. Now, if it pleases you to think that, Georges, but you're quite wrong. Well, Gaston interested me. There was something about him which made me believe what he said. I rang the constabulary at La Rochelle. I got on to the inspector who'd questioned Gaston. A nice, cooperative man. An inspector, um... Daniel Lou, that's something else I remember. Uh, yes, yes, that was his name. Now, he was astounded when I told him I had the schoolmaster in my office. I told him that I was bringing Gaston back to Saint-André personally. You're bringing him back? Uh, yes, yeah, seems the best thing to do. Uh, oh, yes, of course. Um, I should tell you I'm holding a warrant for his arrest. Mm. I've just heard a damaging piece of evidence against him. Oh, who from? One of his pupils. Oh, then I'm right to bring him back. Mm. You may be sure that I shan't dream of interfering in any way in your investigation. Mm. Oh, is there an inn at St. Andre? Yes, the Bon Coin. The food's good, but the rooms don't have running water. Oh, that'll do. If you could book me a room? Of course. Ah, delighted to see you, Chief Inspector. Uh, thank you, Inspector. I hope the examining magistrate doesn't object because I'm here in an unofficial capacity. On the contrary, he's delighted to have your home. Monsieur Joseph Gesta, whom we met. Yes. Huh. No, I don't think handcuffs will be necessary. Oh, uh... oh yes, you're right. <clears throat> My apologies, Monsieur, but uh, I think you'll be safer in the prison at La Rochelle. You know how people react in small towns and villages. And as things now stand, I can't do anything other than arrest you. Chief Inspector said you had some damaging evidence against me. Yeah. One of the boys. Uh, yes, you didn't tell me much on the phone, Inspector. What did the boy say? Uh, uh, should I tell you now? Why not? Well, this boy, Marcel Cellier, says that he saw Monsieur Gaston coming from his tool shed and not from his house, as he told us. What? I was never near my tool shed on Tuesday morning. He swears he saw you from the classroom window. But the boy's lying. Oh, that's something we've got to try and find out, isn't it? I'll do my best for you. I hope you won't be too uncomfortable in the La Rochelle prison. Oh, God. Did you book me a room, Inspector? The, uh... Uh, the bon coin, yes. Mm. Um, I'll see you in the morning at the Mairie. I won't get back tonight. Fine. Oh, this sea air is marvellous after Paris. Mm. In a way, I feel I'm on holiday. <laughs> well, I'm damn sure I don't. <coughs> that was tactless of me. Will my wife be able to visit me? Oh, I'm sure she will. But who knows? You may be released by tomorrow. Now, shall I take a taxi or walk to the Bon Coin? Oh, you can see it from here. It's only about 400 metres. <laughs> oh, famous inspector. Hope the water wasn't too cold. Well, well, let me make amends. What would you like? Will you join me? No, thank you. I hear your local white wine is excellent. Uh, uh, Louis. Everybody calls me Louis. Uh, You're here because of the uh, Leonie business. Uh, I should have thought that was obvious. Uh, uh, thank you. Sunday. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the uh, schoolmaster. Is he guilty? I wouldn't know. Hmm. There's a man here who heard the shot. Yeah. You heard the shot, didn't you, Tao? What? He's a deputy mayor. <laughs> Not that anything he says is much good. He's usually half drunk by 10.30 in the morning. Hey, where are you now? What do you want, Louis? This is Chief Inspector Magre, a very bright inspector from the big city. She's come to pin the murder of that hag on one of us. Nastiest <laughs> bitch on earth. Ah, oh, she isn't on earth now. <laughs> She's the most unpleasant woman I've ever known. Uh, well, tell the inspector what you saw. Well, nothing, except Teo planting onions. I brought him a letter. Hmm? Oh, I've got to get back to me cars. Yeah, when was that? About ten o'clock. I don't remember. <laughs> Sociable fellow. <laughs> if Tao was planting onions, I'd be surprised. He keeps a cake of wine in his um, gardening shed. And when he says he's gardening, he's gone to tap the barrel. He's usually half cut by ten. 
And if he had seen anything, he probably wouldn't say so. Even if he saw someone firing the shot? All the more reason to keep quiet. <sighs> Afraid you don't understand country people, Inspector. I was born in the country. Mm. Now, can I get something to eat? Oysters, perhaps? I'm afraid not. There's a neap tide, so nobody goes out for mussels or oysters. Yes, I do know that. Uh, some fresh fish, perhaps. There's a splendid cook. Oh, well, yes. I would prefer... And fish will go well with your white wine. Press. Fish for the chief inspector? Uh, sorry about the oysters. Mm. I said I was born in the country. I think, I hope, I still understand village people there. Like a family. Joseph Gaston is... An outsider. Yes. You think he killed Leonie Bira? The villagers all wanted to be him. And there's his wife. The villagers despise her. Oh, why? What has she done? Oh, nothing here. No, it was what happened in Courbevoie a few years ago. It appears that she and one of the local councillors, uh, Monsieur Chivassou, having fun and games together, and Madame Chivassou found out about it and shot Madame Gaston in the shoulder. Madame Chivassou was acquitted. After that, the Gastons developed a hankering for country air and came here. And for that, she's despised. Extraordinary. Thought you said you understood country people. Gastons are cuckold. Now, mind you, he's not the only one. The village is full of them. <laughs> now, who stood to benefit from the old lady's death? Mm, some charity, perhaps. They say she disinherited her niece when she married Sellier. Or the village policeman. That's right. Or perhaps a char. Maria, the Polish woman, I don't know. Ah! Your fish, Chief Inspector. Hope you enjoy it. I'm sure I shall. And you're right, the white wine is excellent. So you see, Georges, no oysters. But the fish was good. I arranged to be woken at eight o'clock the next morning. <laughs> the coffee was filthy, but relief was at hand. An hour or two later, I went round to see the village doctor. And he offered you a very good bottle of red wine at ten o'clock in the morning. Mm. When you told me I was appalled, you drink too much, Jules. We all do. Another glass, Chief Inspector. Oh, I'm not going to refuse. <laughs> How did Madame Gaston get on with Leonie Birard? Oh, as far as I know, they never saw each other except through their windows. Leonie used to poke out her tongue at her now and then, as she did with everyone. A disgusting old woman. Yes, you're not a villager. You don't like them. Eh? Oh, don't be stupid. <laughs> I love them. They're all crazy. And although I'm a townsman, I'm accepted. I I'm happy here. Yeah, unlike Joseph Gaston. Oh, he's a pathetic man. He's always trying to do his best. It's an odd remark. <laughs> oh, it seems reasonable to me. Do good as are such boring people. And there's his wife, an insignificant little woman. <laughs> that affair in Courbevoie was the one moment of passion in her life. Mm. Do you think her affair has anything to do with the death of Leonie Bira? Oh, now you're the detective, not me. <laughs> now, uh, I have an exceptional little wine in my private bin. So I went to see Madame Gaston. She was, as Dr. Bressel suggested, an insignificant little woman. And she was riddled with guilt. I blame myself for what happened. If it hadn't been for... For what happened in Courbevoie? You know about it? Everybody knows about it, madame. Oh, I've ruined his life. I'm doing my best to make up for it. I, I try so hard. Joseph's an exceptional man. People thought so well of him in Courbevoie. But because of me, we had to come here. For the first few years, it, it seemed as if everything would be all right. Huh? And then they found out about... about... How did they find out? That dreadful old woman, I suppose. She spied on everybody, opened our mail, talked. Mm. Did your husband have any arguments with her? Oh, quite often. A secretary of the mairie. 
In our early days, yes, postmistress, she had often to consult him. Joseph's strict. He refuses to go beyond his duty. He'll never sign a certificate just to please someone. How did you get on with her? Oh, she made filthy remarks when I went past her house. And you resented that? Oh, naturally. And, and once, when she saw me near her window, she... She turned round and pulled up her skirts. Did your husband know that she'd insulted you in this way? Oh, yes. Ah, uh, no. I see what you mean, but he would never have thought of killing her. He's the most gentle person, thoughtful and considerate. Did you know that Jean-Paul should be head of the class? But Joseph always marks his papers low so that he's not accused of favouritism. Jean-Paul's an exceptionally talented boy. Oh, it's rather hard on Jean-Paul. Yes, I suppose it is, but he understands. How does he get on with the other boys? He used to play with them when we first came here. But not anymore. Not since the village became openly hostile towards us. So he knows about Corbois? As much as a boy of 13 could know. And understand. How did he find out? The same way as the other villages, through gossip, started by Leonie Birard. Mm. You seem to have had good reason for hating her. Yes. Is your son at home? Yes, he is. I thought it better not to send him to school for the moment, although they've sent a relief teacher from La Rochelle. I'd like to have a word with him. Well, uh, yeah, yes. Uh, Jean-Paul? Yes, Maman? Coming! Uh, this is Chief Inspector Maigret. He'd like a word with you. Uh, sit down, Jean-Paul. Well, uh, you're... Uh, you're not frightened of me. I'm not frightened of anybody. Good. Now, uh, Tuesday morning, the day before yesterday... What happened after break? Nothing. Oh, think again. Your father left the schoolroom just after break. Did he come here? I don't know. And one of your school friends said he did. I haven't any friends. Haven't you? I'm the schoolmaster's son. Jean-Paul, I know your father left the classroom about 10.15. Did he come here? I don't know. When he leaves the classroom, do the boys begin jumping up, chattering, playing up? I don't know. Well, of course they do. All boys do. Then why did you ask if you know? Who went to look out of the window? I don't know. Now listen to me, young man. You... Hmm. you want your father to come out of prison, don't you? Yes. Yes, then perhaps you could try and be more helpful. Oh, you mustn't be angry with him, Chief Inspector. Yesterday he was questioned for over an hour. I... I don't know anything. I, I didn't see anything. I have nothing to tell you. 13, eh? It's quite an ordeal for a youngster. I should probably call again, Madame Gaston. I left the Gaston house and walked over to the mairie. Daniel Lou was questioning the Polish char. I listened. I didn't want to interfere. She had a baby in her arms. You say she promised to leave you all she had, including the house? Yes, she promised. When did she give you this promise? Oh, I don't know, a long time ago. After my second baby, I think. How many children have you? Oh, uh, five. Uh, uh, two uh, at school, there's a baby here and two at home. <laughs> Who's looking after them? Nobody. No! No, shut up, or I smack you! Yeah. Hmm. Um, did Leonie Bira sign a paper about you? I don't know. Why do you think she made you such a promise? Maybe to annoy her niece when she married Monsieur Cellier. She was furious about it. Hmm. 
Monsieur Silly was going to summon her for throwing rubbish out of the window, throwing things at the people passing mm. by. Uh, Silly is the local policeman. Yes, so I understand. Uh, oh, smoke your famous pipe if you want to. Oh, perhaps not with the baby. Uh, do you mind if I ask you a question, Maria? Is Theo, the deputy mayor, the father of one of your children? Oh, I don't know. He could be. I, I'm not sure. Mm. And he knew that the old lady had promised to leave you something in her will. Well, of course, I told him. And he told me to ask her for a paper. And did you? Yes. But she said everything was arranged. Mm, I didn't find anything among her papers, Chief oh. Inspector. Mm. I knew she'd treat me. Oh, oh do be quiet. No. Uh, would you say that she was hated? Hated enough for someone to kill her? Well, somebody must have think she's dead. Well, <clears throat> thank you, Maria. You've been very helpful. Now I think you should get back to your other children. Oh, I knew you should me. <sighs> now you can smoke your pipe. No paper, no will. Mm -hmm. I telephoned a solicitor in La Rochelle with whom Mademoiselle Bira deposited some securities. Mm. He told me she often talked to making a will, but hadn't done so. So, if nothing's found, her niece will get the lot. Mm, looks like it. Uh, oh, here, you'd better have a glance at these. Mm? Not that they'll provide any clues, as far as I can see. I found them in her house. None of these are addressed to Leonie Bira. <laughs> Some of them 10 or 12 years old. Yeah, heritage from her days as postmistress. It appears they were not always delivered. That's why she was detested by everyone in the village. She knew too much about them. Yeah, prying old busybody. Yeah. Ah, I see you've collected some point two twos. Yes, I think I've got more. Not yeah. that it helps much. It's no use looking for identifying marks on the bullet which hit Leonie Bira. Mm, I know the bullet squashes flat when it hits anything unlike bullets from more lethal weapons. <laughs> My knowledge of a point two two is a bit rusty. They're not often used in Paris. <laughs> but if I remember correctly, they fire two kinds of cartridges. Yeah, the long and the short. The long can hit its target over 150 metres. That was the kind used on Mademoiselle Bira. And to complicate matters, all these guns have been recently fired. Was it just an accident? Somebody taking a pot shot at a bird in one of the gardens. Uh, or somebody just firing towards her to scare her. Hmm? You see what I'm getting at? If she hadn't been hit in the eye, she'd be alive today. So murder implies... A crack shot. Hmm. It's worth a thought. Hmm. Oh, it's nearly lunchtime. Will you join me? I, oh, no, I have to go into La Rochelle. But I'll be back this afternoon. You'll find me here if you want me. Uh, will you be eating here, Chief Inspector? Mm -hmm. Therese is cooking our rabbit. Oh, it sounds fine. Piano, Louis. Uh, this is Chief Inspector Maigret. Marcelo? Marcelo Rato, our butcher. So, it's you who's going to dig out a secret, is it? I'm trying. Uh, you try hard. If you find out anything, you'll deserve a medal. How's your boy getting on? Hmm? Oh, the doctor says it's time he began to walk. Mm. That's easier said than done. Enjoy yourself, Inspector. Mm. What's the matter with his boy? Young Joseph? Oh, he was knocked down by a motorbike a month ago. <laughs> Everything happens to Marcelin. Tough life. Sister in the sanatorium, two children stillborn. <laughs> he drinks too much. He'll have swallowed half a bottle of Perno before he's finished his round. You're not a bad chap, though. How long before lunch? Oh, about 50 minutes. I'll be back in time. I went over to the school. The children were just coming out for lunch. The relief teacher pointed out Marcel Cellier to me. We sat down under a tree. The smell of the sea so close was good. And tell me, Marcel, I suppose you've never told a lie. Oh, yes, sir, I have. But I've always confessed. Hmm. Important lies? Mm, pretty important. Would you give me an example? Oh, like the time I tore my trousers climbing a tree. I told my father that I caught them on a nail in Joseph Rato's garden. Hmm. He's my best friend. But you owned up in the end. Oh, yes, sir. I always do. 
the schoolmaster's son a friend of yours? No, sir. He doesn't seem to want friends. Maybe because his father's the teacher. Mm. Now, Tuesday morning, what happened after you got back to the classroom? Monsieur Gaston had to go over to the mairie. And you fool about while he's away? Hmm? Oh, we throw rubbish and things at each other. But sometimes we pretend to fight. <laughs> now, as I understand it, you walked over to one of the windows overlooking the gardens and the courtyard, and you saw the schoolmaster going over to his tool shed. No, sir. He was walking away from his tool shed. I saw him shut the door behind him. <coughs> you know, has my pipe made you cough? Uh, no. Now, will you confess that little lie? <laughs> well, it is a bit strong, sir. Well, I shall put it out. You're quite right, you know. I shouldn't pollute this fresh sea air. Do you play a great deal with the other boys? Not much, no. No, I know. I'm too fat. Hmm. Now, Joseph Ratto is your best friend. He's the butcher's son, isn't he? The one who got knocked down by a motorbike. Yes. So he wasn't at school on the day of the crime? No, sir. You didn't like Leonie Bira? She used to shout rude things at me when I went past her house. You didn't tell your father what you saw from the window until the Wednesday evening. Why not? I suppose I didn't think it important until then. And he reported what you told him to the inspector? That's right. You haven't lied, have you, Marcel? You know what you said has put your schoolmaster in prison. No, sir, I told the truth. Oh, thank you for being so straightforward. You've been very helpful. Have I? Hmm. You've given me quite a lot to think about. Now, I think it's time we both had our lunch. I'm hungry. Me too. What do you think of the rabbit? Absolutely first class. My compliments to Therese. Yeah. Drop a mark to wash it down? Excellent idea. Yeah. No, doctor, won't you join me? Uh, a mark? Oh, thank you. Uh, two marks, Louis. Uh, Sit down, doctor. Uh, oh, well. What do you think about it? Hmm? <laughs> about what? <laughs> about nothing. About everything. <laughs> Do you think many of them think Gaston killed the old lady? Oh, about one in ten. Well, what about the other nine tenths? Whom do they suspect? <laughs> the person they'd like to be guilty. Oh, God, they're marvellous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Louis. Ah, thank you. <clears throat> uh, would they let Gaston be convicted, knowing he was innocent? Without batting an eyelid. Mm. Now, I'd like to talk to you about that accident at the butcher's side. Oh, that can't have anything to do with Leonie's death. Although, oddly enough, it happened just near her house. Joseph's leg was broken in two places. Mm. Did his father get anything out of the insurance company? Oh, a fair amount, I should think. It seems it was the driver's fault. Do you think it was? Oh, uh, well, it's not for me to decide. That's up to the insurance company. Dr. Brassel. <laughs> You've got more to tell me. <laughs> now I understand what's meant by the third degree. Okay, so I'll come clean. <laughs> Marceline's a sad case. If he goes on drinking, his will be the next funeral after our respected ex-postmistress. Well, the funeral's tomorrow, isn't it? Yes. The long and the short of it is, the driver was a local lad, and being insured, he had nothing to lose, so he took the blame. You made out the certificates, hmm? Mm, of course. And made them out so that Marcelin would get the biggest possible compensation. Uh, let's say I stressed the possibilities of complications. <laughs> After all, when a cow dies around here of a sudden illness, the vet certifies it was an accident. Mm. So, unless I'm mistaken, Marcelin's boy might have been up for the past week or two. Well, I haven't removed the plaster yet. Uh, he has to make a proper recovery. <laughs> <laughs> My good doctor, you're a scoundrel. <laughs> no, no. It's just that... Oh, that I love them all. <laughs> well, I should like to have another drink with you. Ah. After lunch, I went back to the mairie. Inspector Danielou had got back from La Rochelle. He told me Gaston had been questioned extensively by the examining magistrate. Gaston thought it was, most likely, a practical joke that proved fatal. And... 
that Marcel Cellier was lying. He swore that he'd never been in the tool shed that afternoon. Oh, well done, Georges. So, one of them was lying. But which one? Master or pupil? I took the file on the killing back with me to the hotel to study it. It didn't seem to help. And I remember waking up the next morning with a weight on my mind, a feeling of tragedy. I went to the funeral, but there was no interest in her burial from the villagers beyond one of curiosity. And then, to my surprise, I saw that Jean-Paul had come to watch. Now, why? It was inconceivable, but suddenly I was convinced that one of the boys was concerned in Leonie Biard's death. I walked after Jean-Paul as he left the cemetery. Jean-Paul! Oh. I'll walk with you. Your mother didn't come to the funeral? No. Why did you come? I wanted to see. Why? I don't know. Hmm. Why aren't you friends with Marcel? I'm not friends with anybody. Are you sorry your father's in prison? He didn't do it, you know. I suppose you knew something that would get him out of prison. Look, I'm only trying to understand. I know how difficult things are for you. Now, Marcel Cellier seems like a good boy, and he says he saw your father come out of the tool shed. He's telling a lie. Hmm? Why do you say that? Because I saw my father cross the yard from a mairie and go into our house for his coffee, like he often did. Well, if you're telling the truth, why didn't you say this before? Because... I'm the schoolmaster's son. They would have thought I... Yes, I, I, I understand. Now, you're quite sure about this? Yes. Because Marcel was at the window on the right. And you can't see the tool shed from there. What? He... He couldn't have seen my father. Ask the other boys. See if they remember. Now, come on, come on, lad. Cheer up. Everything's going to be all right. You'll have your father out of prison before the end of the day. I've been to the school, Daniel and I've checked the windows. Marcel Cellier lied, all right. But why? Yes, why? Does he think his father killed Leonie Bira? Was he trying to protect him from suspicion? As possible. I've had the feeling, right from the beginning, that this is some children's business in which grown-ups have been mixed up by accident. Hmm. Now, why did that boy lie? Perhaps he'll tell us the truth if we talk to him again. Oh, by the way, uh, another point two two turned up. It belongs to Marcelin's son, Joseph. His mother bought it in earlier. She found it in their stable, said she'd forgotten about it when the villagers were asked to turn in their rifles. Oh. Hmm. Let me see that map of the school building, the Mary and the houses. Uh, now, this is where the Rattos live. That's right. And Joseph is Marcel's best friend. You have an idea? No more than an idea. What are you going to do? If what I think is right, it won't be pleasant. That's when you decided to go over to the Ratto house and question Joseph. He was in his room on the first floor, his leg in plaster, and, oh yes, on the way upstairs, Marcel Cellier came scuttling down. He didn't stop to talk to you. He looked afraid. Oh, are you trying to score points off me, Georges? Not at all, old friend. Just giving you another example of my excellent memory. Mm. And then you interviewed the boy alone. His mother remained downstairs. Correct in every detail, I interviewed the boy alone. Ah, Joseph. I'm Chief Inspector Maigret. I'd like a word with you. No, 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 don't bother to get up. All that plaster. I know about you. I passed your friend on the stairs. He didn't seem to want to talk to me. Well, he was in a hurry to get home. Ah. Ah, Joseph, would you like me to take that plaster off? It must be very uncomfortable. Oh, you know. Mm. The doctor told me. What were you up to, you and Marcel, when you were knocked down? Now, you better tell me about it. Have you found the horseshoe? 
Oh, I see. You mean the one in Leonie Birard's house? Inspector Danielou found one there. We wondered about it. I put it there. Ah. Well, how did that happen? Well, Marcel and I found an old one when we were coming home, and we thought it would be a joke to throw it in the old lady's window. And then I thought it would be funnier to put it in her bed. <coughs> really? So I climbed in her window to do that. But I knocked something over and she heard me. I got out as quick as I could, but I dropped the horseshoe in the house. And I'd only run a few yards to join Marcel when Zuma got run over. So, Mayor Bira saw the accident? Yes, I know she did, because of afterwards. Oh, go on. They took me to the doctor and they gave me something to sleep. And when I woke up, my father was there, and he began talking about insurance. He said if I told what really happened, he wouldn't get any money. So when Marcel came to see me, I made him promise not to say we were fooling about. Mm. Well, you must have got bored staying up in this room all alone for nearly a month. Do you ever go over to the window? Well, I oughtn't to. Yeah, in case somebody finds out you can walk. Are you going to tell the insurance people? No, no, no. It's none of my business. I can see the old lady's house from here. Did she ever see you at the window? Yes, yes, she used to tease me by waving the horseshoe at me and poking out her tongue. So she knew the accident was your fault? Well, that's what I meant before. Otherwise, why should she do that? Mm. Did you tell your father? Yes, and wasn't he cross? He said I'd better keep quiet about it. He said we needed the insurance money. Why did Marcel come to see you just now? Well, he said he'd have to own up if they questioned him again. He'd been to confession. Hmm. And he'll say that he saw you at the window just before the old lady was killed. Well, how did you know that? Yes, I was there, just looking out, and she was waving a horseshoe at me. And Marcel could see both your house and the other house from one of the schoolroom windows. Now, tell me what exactly happened. Well, I've got to, have I? Yes. Well, I took my rifle. Do you usually keep your rifle in your bedroom? Uh, yes. And I went back to the window. I wanted to scare her. I thought she'd tell the insurance people, and then her father wouldn't be able to buy a new van. And you fired the gun. Did you aim it? Well, I was aiming at the window. I wanted to break a pane of glass. That's all. Well, they put me in prison for that? Oh, boys of your age aren't sent to prison. Where was your father when you fired your shot? Uh, I think in the shop. Yet he didn't hear anything. Oh, well, when he's had a few, he... Mm. Now, tell me, Joseph, your rifle was found in the stable. Who took it down there? I did. But you're not supposed to be able to walk. Oh, uh, I forgot. It was my father. I asked him to take it down there. Well, if this is true, why didn't you ever fire at the old lady before? On one of the other days when she was waving the horseshoe at you. I suppose you'd tell me what really happened. I'll help you. You were at the window. The old lady at hers. You could see down into your own yard. The stable door was open. Now, what was your father doing? He, he was quartering a lamb. Well, a moment ago, you said he was in the shop. You, 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 you're getting me confused. The rifle was not in your room. Now, from where your father was, he could see Leonie Birard waving the horseshoe. Isn't that right? Well, nobody could have told you that. Did you just guess it? And your father hated this monstrous old woman just as much as everyone else in the village. So, what I think happened next is that he went into the stable and came out carrying your gun. What will they do to him? Mm, that depends. It'll be better for him if you tell the truth. Will it? Really? Yes. It all happened so quickly. He did have my gun, and he pointed it towards her house, and then he fired, and I heard him mutter, that's one for you, you old louse. 
Did he aim carefully? No, no. He just lifted the gun to his shoulder and he fired. Anyway, it wouldn't do him any good to aim. He couldn't hit a bullock at 20 metres. Mm. I suppose it's because he drinks too much. And then? When he saw Mother Birard fall down, he stood quite still for a moment, and then he ran into the stable with a gun. And when he come out, he... He was swigging at a bottle of... Uh, Perno? He hides one there, away from Mamma. Well, then he staggered off. He must have gone to the Bon Coin because he came home that night drunker than I've ever seen him. Now, Marcel lied because he thought it was you who fired the shot. Yes, we're friends. Mm. Well, that's all, lad. Some people have to grow up quicker than others. Will he go to prison? He only wanted to give her a fright. I know. I'll get the doctor to come round. I think it's time he took that plaster off. I went back to the mairie and collected Inspector Danielou. It was market day, so it seemed most likely that Marcelin would be at the Bon Coin. He was, and he was very, very drunk. The clever inspector. <laughs> Have you dug deep? Shut up, Marcelin. You're drunk. I'll oh, get drunk if I want to. I'm going to tell him. I'm not going to be spied on. Tell me what? About the insurance. No. no. You find out for yourself. I'm afraid it's more serious than that. Huh? Well, what have I done there? What was something? Leonie Bira. Ah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> ah, the, the clever inspector is clever. Oh, you've been pestering little kids, eh? Find out. Give me a piano, Louis. Gentlemen. Yeah, that's all right, Louis. Yeah. Well, I'll pay for this one myself. I got her, didn't I? I got her, the lace. Are you coming? I don't want to handcuff you. Suppose I want to be handcuffed. As you please. See that, chaps? I got her, didn't I? Thank you, Chief Inspector. Mm. I'll see you before you leave. No, I don't think so. I'll get the next train. Unless, of course, there are any oysters to be had. Oh, I'm afraid not, Chief Inspector. Another few days, when the neat tide's finished. Mm, in that case, my bill. Aha, uh -huh. I told you. What did I say? You only went to St. André sur Mer for the oysters. Oops. Poor Jules. Let's make up for it now. I know a little place not far from here where the oysters are superb and the 